Do, do, do. And I actually, um, I forgot my question that I asked last week, but this one I put on here, um, if you could turn into any animal, what would it be? Thinking of our princesses turning into yeah. dragons. Right. <laughs> All right, and we I shared this link in quite a few places. Hopefully we'll get some people, and I shared it kind of early, so we'll get some people joined in this shortly. Kim, did you get the link? Yeah, I already posted it. Hello, whoever's there. Yes, Sorry. hello, hello. Whoever's joining us. Whew. And we have, um, I know, um, your assistant Kim <laughs> and I talked about this um, and we said that this week um, or we have one more week we're doing or two more weeks right dragons kiss is next yes and then a prince among frogs so and two more after this one got it and this one I was actually able to find a few different covers so now that we have some people joining us we'll give them maybe another 30 seconds and I will put you up here actually I will just go ahead and put our our beautiful selves on the screen <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like to, like I said, I tried to give you a warning. <laughs> um, but hello, everyone who is joining. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hi. Um, so yes, we will do this, and then we'll take a quick, uh, well, quick-ish summer break, <laughs> and then we can resume again in the school year. We're starting. Uh, personally, we're going to actually start homeschooling ourselves here. So. Um, I'm going to try to do year round schooling so it'll be a little more flexible and we can uh, use some of your fantastic books to analyze. I'm going to work those into the curriculum. <laughs> uh, but also uh, we'll, we'll get started in what is a traditional school year in September. We can start our uh, rereading some of these. And I did get, thank you again so, so much for signing so many copies. Of oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I am fully loaded. I have to get them all listed on the website and uh, updated quantities and everything. Cause uh, I only had, um, I always get these two mixed up. Power of a princess and more than a princess. I only had the first, I only had lots of the second, not enough of the first. So I had to order a large batch of the first. <laughs> but we are seeing some fun people uh, joining us on our website from that. So, and I will go ahead and let you read again. I should say for anyone joining us, hi, I'm Liz from Capricos Books, uh, currently located in Bel Air, Maryland. And we have our wonderful author joining us virtually, Miss Edie Baker here. And today, hi. let's put on, here is, I was able to find these three covers. So we have the modern one, we'll call it the um, original. And then I believe this was from the British one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Cause I know, I know we had seen the other, I think it was the very first one we'd seen multiple covers of. And then when I found this one, I got excited. Cause I'm like, Oh, that one continues to match too. I like it. And maybe you can tell me, I don't know if the rest of the series, if they all continued to have matching covers, no matter where they were printed or did they just do their yeah. own thing? Yeah, um, the other uh, other publishers, the other uh, countries do their own thing. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. At least this one seems consistent and seems to, to kind of match again as a series. Yeah. But all right, I will let you read The Dragon Princess today. All right. I'm starting with the prologue. Prologue for The Dragon Princess. Though she was just a few minutes old, everyone agreed that the baby was beautiful. She had eyes like those of her mother, Princess Emma, and a shock of blonde hair much like that of her grandmother, Queen Chartreuse. Emma swore that her daughter had Edric's smile, but her mother, her aunt, and her grandmother all claimed that the baby was too young and wouldn't really smile for some time yet. When she was only three months pregnant, Emma had, dream had dreamed that the baby was going to be a girl. After that, she and her husband, Prince Edric, had never worried about a boy's name. The baby would be named Millie after the second green witch, Emma's long ago ancestor. Although Emma wanted to show Millie to Edric right away, the midwife and all the other women in the room insisted that they wash the baby first. Unfortunately, an over-eager lady-in-waiting hadn't bothered to warm the water before bringing it to the midwife. The midwife, rattled in the presence of so much royalty, most of whom were witches, splashed the cold water on the baby. With a startled cry, the baby turned red as a strawberry, and her thin wail broke the calm of her parents' bedchamber. Emma sat up to see what was wrong. 
At that instant, the air seemed to sizzle, and the baby turned from a beautiful human newborn with honey blonde hair into a baby dragon with scales of the palest green. Queen Chartreuse screamed. Two ladies in waiting fled the room. The midwife fainted. Emma sighed and reached for her baby. I was afraid of this, she murmured, gazing down at the squalling infant. Turning to Aunt Christina, she added, This is what comes of spending half my life as a dragon. Chapter 1 not quite 15 years later. Princess Emma, the green witch of Greater Greensword, was sitting at her work table copying spells <clears throat> under fresh parchment when a slender green dragon darted through her window and landed on the floor beside her. Millie's home, squawked the green and yellow parrot perched on the edge of a precariously balanced stack of books. The bird flapped its wings, making the whole stack sway. Emma gestured at the books as they started to fall and they shivered back into place. I know you too, said Emma. You don't need to tell me when she's standing right here. And as for you, Millie, she said, turning to the dragon, what upset you this time? The dragon sat down and wrapped her long spiked tail around her. The scullery maid dropped a pail of muddy water at the top of the stairs just as I was coming up. I'd already put on my new gown for Prince Atworth's visit, and the water ruined it. I changed into a dragon before I could help it. Yes, I know you can fix the gown, but I didn't think of that until later. Anyway, the girl started screaming, so I flew out the window. She was terrified, as if she thought I was about to bite her head off. I don't understand. After all these years, why are some people still so afraid of me? I've never hurt anyone while I was a dragon. At least, not since I was a little girl and didn't know any better. You'd think everyone here at the castle would remember that. I'm sorry, darling. It's human nature to be afraid of dragons. I'm sure you handled it very well. Light shimmered around the dragon, and a lovely young girl appeared. Her honey gold hair framed her face in soft curls and cascaded down her back. Except for her dainty nose, her face was much like her mother's, and her eyes were the same shade of deep green. What a mess, screeched the parrot. Millie glanced down at her gown and sighed. The pale green skirt was splattered with mud, and the real blossoms sewn onto the bodice were broken and wilted. She touched one of the stems, wishing she could fix it herself. Although Millie had a magic of her own, she was unable to perform the simplest kind of spells that most witches found easy. Would you mind fixing it for me, mother? Not at all. I'll just... Zoe's here, shrieked you two. And both mother and daughter turned to the window where little bat had landed on the ledge. I don't know why we have a door if everyone comes through the window, the parrot grumbled. Oops, it was a parrot. <laughs> I don't mean to intrude, said the bat. I was on my way over when I saw Millie coming through the window, so I thought I'd look for her here. We were just talking, said Emma. Come right in. Zoe fluttered into the room and settled on the floor beside Millie. A shadow passed over the bat, and a puff of cool, dank air made Millie sneeze. When she looked at her friend again, Zoe was no longer a bat, but a slender girl's head came up just past Millie's shoulder. Her hair was such a pale blonde that it looked almost white. Her eyes were blue-gray and shining. The parrot flapped its wings and squawked, Watch your next vampire in the room! You have to be the rudest bird I've ever met, said Millie. I don't know why you keep him, mother. He was a wedding gift from old fat wizard to your father and me. I've heard that me too, you two's father, still lives with old fat and gets more obnoxious every year. Sometimes I wonder if that wizard didn't give us the bird for revenge. The old wizard hasn't gotten his hands on any new spell since the day I helped your great aunt Christina make him stop stealing witches' memories. If you two gets too obnoxious, just let me know, said Zoe. I've never bitten a parrot before. What do you suppose their blood tastes like? You two opened to speak to say something, but apparently thought better of it and closed with a snap. When Millie and Zoe began to laugh, he turned around so his back was to them and hunched his head down into his feathers. Would you really want to bite a parrot? Emma asked. The girl laughed again, her smiling smile lighting up her pale face. Don't worry, your highness. I've never bitten a bird or any creature larger than a grasshopper, much to my father's dismay. He's disappointed that I'm not embracing his family's lifestyle. Emma frowned. How can you do that? Don't vampires have to drink blood? Full vampires do, but I'm lucky enough to have a choice. I just turn into an ordinary bat whenever the urge to drink blood comes over me, and then I eat insects. It's the same for the boys and little Suzette. How are your mother and the new baby? asked Emma. I haven't seen Lil since right after the baby was born. They're doing well, thank you, said Zoe. Mother sends her love. Turning to Millie, she glanced at her friend and frowned. What happened to your gown? A minor disaster, said Millie. I was just asking my mother to fix it. Prince Atworth is on his way here. I saw him when I was flying over the forest. He has a small party with him, only a squire and a page. They should arrive fairly soon. I wanted to talk to you about that, too. 
a mother, don't you have something else you can try that might help me? Not a potion, but a spell, perhaps? It would be a catastrophe if I turned into a dragon while he's here. He's the fifth prince to come courting, and I can't afford to frighten away another. I can't believe you want me to try magic on you against it, Emma. You know my magic never works the way it should on you. I think your dragon side changes it somehow. You remember that potion I gave you the last time a prince came to visit? Those green swellings are horrible, said Zoe. They were the size of my fist, and they jingled when you moved. Millie grimaced. I never told you, but they glowed in the dark, too. Even after I drank the second potion to reverse the effects of the, fir the, effects of the first, the swellings didn't go away for days. I still don't understand how Prince Leopold made you angry. He seemed nice enough to me, said Zoe. I thought so, too, at first. But then he started telling me all the things he would do to improve our castle if we got married, which meant tearing down half of it. He would have made it squat and ugly, and he criticized everything from the moat to the shape of the castle keep and acted like he knew more about castles than anyone else. I tried to tell him that I loved the castle just the way it was, but he told me I didn't know what I was talking about. I kept expecting to feel the change come on, so I was thrilled when it didn't. Then those boils or whatever they were started to pop out all over me, and I knew he was going to leave as soon as I saw the look on his face. I don't want another mother, potion mother, but maybe a spell... I really don't think it's a good idea, sweetheart. Who knows what the side effects might be? And to do it right before a prince is coming to visit. But that's the whole reason I need your help. I'm never going to find the man I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with if I keep scaring them away. You still have plenty of time, Millie, said Emma. You're not that old. I'm turning 15 the day after tomorrow, Millie wailed. By the time you were 15, you'd already fallen in love with father. And just last night, grandmother read a letter to me that she'd received from her old friend, Queen Isabel. Her son is marrying a girl they just met. She was locked in a tower for most of her life, and he was the first prince she'd ever seen. The girl's a year younger than me. Grandmother said that there aren't very many good princes around, and if I don't hurry, they'll all be taken. Chartreuse always was helpful that way, Emma muttered. I wouldn't worry about it, she said in a louder voice. When I was young, she told me that no prince would marry me, and tried to make me marry the first one who asked. And then I met your father, who was exactly right for me. I'm sure you'll meet the right man, too, someday. What if Atsworth is the right one, and I scare him off by turning into a dragon the first time we argue? You two fluttered into the air and landed on Emma's work table, his long green tail dragging behind him. Then you'll be an old maid, he squawked, nearly knocking over a pot of ink. Emma frowned and snatched the pot out from under the parrot's wing. Watch yourself, you two. I'll send you to the chicken coop. What would a parrot do in a chicken coop, he asked. Who says you'd still be a parrot, Emma replied. Pfft, the parrot said, sticking out his tongue in a rude sort of way. Shoo, said Emma, waving her hand at him. I can't work while you're sitting on my table. The parrot snapped at her fingers before darting to the window ledge. As he flew above the table, his tail knocked over the pot of ink, dousing Emma's parchment. Scowling, she gestured at the ink while muttering under her breath. The ink reversed its flow and ran back into the pot, which righted itself with a thunk, leaving the parchment as clean as before. Please, mother, said Millie. I need you to say a spell. I don't want to be an old maid. Oh, all right, Emma said, looking resigned. But didn't say, don't say that I didn't warn you. Tapping her finger on her chin, she stood her daughter for a moment. I think we'll try a different approach. The potion I gave you last time was meant to prevent you from turning into a dragon if you got angry. Why don't we see if we can curb your temper instead? If you think it will work, said Millie. I can't guarantee anything, but we'll try this. Quench this girl's temper and make her mood light. Don't let her get mad, at least till tonight. What do you mean, at least till tonight? What's so important about tonight? asked Millie. You said that those swellings didn't disappear right away when I gave you the second potion. I didn't want to make the spell last too long in case it has side effects you don't like. If it works the way you want it to, I can always try to make it more permanent. That sounds reasonable, said Zoe. I wonder what the side effects will be. Millie darted an indignant glance at her direct in her direction. I hope there won't be any. I think it's so romantic that Prince Asworth is coming for your birthday, said Zoe. It would have been more romantic if I had met him before this. I never even heard his name until his messenger brought his letter. Someone's coming, screeched you two. Three boys on horseback. Maybe one of them is that prince. Let me see, said Millie as she and Zoe raced to the window. The dragon part of her gave Millie excellent eyesight, but she had to wait until the horses trotted from behind some trees before she could see them. He's very handsome, and he has dragons on his crest. If he likes dragons, maybe he's the one for me. Let's go meet him, said Zoe. Millie turned away from the window. Are you coming, mother? She asked, her cheeks flushed with excitement. Emma smiled and reached for her daughter's hand. I wouldn't miss this for anything, but don't you want me to do something about your gown? 
They're on their way down the curving tower stairs when Millie glanced behind her and said to Zoe, I can't believe all you have to do to change is think about it. I wish it was that easy for me. I can never change when I want to. Do you know how frustrating it is to have so little control over your life? I can imagine, said Zoe. It must be awful. That was chapter one. The Fantastic. Drum. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate you sharing that. And also, I I realized something I forgot to say earlier. Congratulations. I'm so excited on the, uh, they're changing, uh, they're adding a um, frog princess ride now in Disney World. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> um, mm. So that's really cool to see your, your stories take on an actual ride. <laughs> A whole experience. So I'm very excited to go and see that when that's back up um, and running. So uh, I just want to see we have a few viewers. I'm going to see if anybody had any comments. Um, go ahead and leave them now. And the question of this week was, um, if you could turn into any animal, what would it be? So if you want to leave that as a comment, you are welcome to. Again, these are rewatchable if you missed any part of this. Um, oh, I like it, a unicorn. That's a good one. We were in the car the other day. Sorry, sub, sub thing. We were in the car the other day. It was my eight-year-old daughter, and we were talking about it. She's like, I had a dream where a whale and a unicorn had a baby, and it was, I called it a narwhal. And I'm like, those are real things. Like, you know that that's a narwhal. Like, it's a real thing. She goes, they're not real. Those are just make-believe, like unicorns. Like, no, narwhal is a real thing. Um, so she has to, we have to go see them sometimes. So I like a unicorn. That's a good one. Um, so the, um, I, I liked that the, the the little vampire would just eat insects. That was, <laughs> that was such a good touch there. <laughs> I love that your magical kingdom has so many magical creatures and different creatures. I feel like sometimes you see these and they don't overlap. <laughs> right. Do you have an answer? What What would you do, Miss Edie Baker? Uh, well, I've always thought that if I could be a, a, any creature at all, mythical or real, I'd be a dragon. Just all right. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes <Yeah>. sense. <laughs> Um, oh, I remember what I was saying too. See, I get distracted very easily. Um, <laughs> I wanted to say, uh, if anybody missed any part of this, you can go back and watch it. It is saved on our uh, Capricos Books Facebook. It's also on our YouTube channel. So um, you can definitely watch this from the beginning because I know usually we go th through these pretty quick. We don't take much longer than 20 minutes, um, but we've read almost all of the series. There are two books left in this, um, the Frog Princess series. And um, we did, before that, we did More Than a Princess and then um, the More Than a Princess series. And we also did um, Magical Animal Rescue. We, we did a few of those books as well. And yeah, so we will start those up. So again, we'll do the last two books in this series and then we'll start again in the fall when it's a little bit cooler. Because like I said earlier, I'm a little hot from today. <laughs> I was running around. So we'll do it. And we'll also do these a little bit later in the day so that more people can join us um, after school. So it'll be a fun after school special we'll make of it. <laughs> well, I'm going to start with um, Why Do I Princess? Okay. Yes, that'll be great. Um, I, was, I was trying to think of all the other <laughs> groups that you have, all the other series. All right. Why Do I Princess in the fall? All right. It looks like we don't have any other questions or comments, so we can wrap it up today. Um, so have a wonderful day. I hope everybody enjoys it. Hope you have good weather. It's supposed to rain where we are, but uh, we shall see. Cause I don't know, it's pretty blue out there now. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a, a heat thunderstorm. So, all right, everybody have a great day. Bye. Stay Bye. safe. Yes. Bye. <laughs>